Hey guys, back with another video. Today we're talking about crypto, crypto adoption, why it feels like we've kind of just been speculating since 2015 and that there, it feels like there's not much use case and really like very limited adoption. So let's get into it. So obviously Bitcoin was the first major cryptocurrency um, that really, you know, took the world by storm. And uh, it's still the largest one with the largest market cap. And in my opinion, it is one of the only real product market fits out there as digital gold because it has a very basic monetary policy. It's extremely decentralized. There's no one entity that has full control over it. Um, and I think other cryptocurrencies don't really have this as much in common. They're much more centralized. Um, I think they're easier to control, including Ethereum, in my opinion. Um, so, and also Ethereum obviously is trying to be something different than just digital gold. Um, it has a much more complicated monetary policy and its governance structure is different. Um, and obviously it's gone through a lot of upgrades and changes. Um, you know, it's much more complicated than Bitcoin. And it's trying to do smart contracts. It's really trying to disrupt something somewhat differently than Bitcoin is. But that is kind of somewhat changing with layer twos on Bitcoin. Um, and with Bitcoin ordinals, especially because, <laughs> you know, that's kind of really creating a new argument in Bitcoin, such as, is it, uh, is it uh, really fungible? You know, now that different Satoshis may have different information on them. Um, and that was always somewhat of an, of an argument, but now even more so. But I'm, I'm kind of getting sidetracked here. This is really about um, adoption and how adoption, when we're entering a new paradigm, as crypto is, obviously the old or our, our current paradigm is um, fiat money and banking. And not only is Bitcoin disrupting, um, you know, Bitcoin and crypto disrupting fiat, it's also disrupting traditional banking. Um, you know, you, you have, you're going to have the ability to be your own bank, to self-custody your own money. Um, so this is a major paradigm shift. And uh, I kind of want to compare it to electric vehicles where, you know, a lot of people for many years thought that there was no way electric vehicles were going to be the predominant form of transportation. Um, and until recently, really the last maybe two or three years, people really didn't take electric vehicles that seriously. And that is because adoption, even when it's <clears throat> growing very quickly, it still looks very small for a while until it reaches, you know, 2%, then maybe, four, you know, so if something's growing at 50% a year, but it's starting at 0 0.0, you know, 0.01% of, uh, of market share, then obviously you're not going to notice it very, very, you know, it's going to be a long time until you notice it. If it's growing at 50% a year, um, you know, crypto is similar to electric vehicles in that sense, in that, um, you know, if we're discussing DeFi and people actually using DeFi for for finance, not just for speculation and trying to get an unrealistic yield or things like that, <laughs> um, there's not that many people doing it. But there are some people, like uh, I believe Eric Voorhees said that he was able, I don't know how he did it, I, I kind of want to figure out how he did it, but get a loan against his, uh, against his Bitcoin. I think it was, you know, on DeFi, it wasn't through Coinbase. Or anything any centralized party like that um and uh and bought a house with that loan against his bitcoin you know how many people do you know that are doing that probably zero but there are people doing that and it's growing um you know each year i believe and so this is comparable to evs where you know they tesla for example has been growing at at least 50 percent a year you know, since its inception, more or less. But when it had market share of, you know, much less than 1%, nobody was noticing. But now that it has market share, I believe, in America, it has, it has a lot of market share in new vehicles sold. I mean, you see Tesla's all over the place now. So now people can tell, even though it's not, it's actually growing slower than it was in the beginning. But its market share is you know, it has a much, it has a significant market share. So people notice it now. 
I think the same thing is happening with DeFi. It's not on people's radar yet because people don't really know anybody who's using it, but it is growing at a, at a significant rate each year. And once it reaches a tipping point, um, people are really going to start noticing it and it's going to be, you know, closer to mainstream. The other problem with crypto is that it's fighting very powerful forces. You know, the, the industries that it's disrupting, fiat, which is obviously government money, and government is probably the most powerful thing in the world. Um, you know, it's really the only monopoly that nobody cares about. You know, everybody is like, okay, they can be a monopoly. They can have, you know, all the power. But that's also why we have checks and balances, of course. And I, I believe crypto is going to be another check and balance, which is very good. Um, but obviously you're fighting government um, because they don't want to give up control of money. And you're also fighting the traditional banking system, which is also extremely powerful and corrupt. And, um, you know, a lot of it is just smoke and mirrors and they're not really helping the people that they're that they're working with, you know, when they're giving, you know, point one percent or point zero one percent, you know, yield on your savings while getting, you know, much better returns themselves. So, and also speculating with your money potentially. Um, so you're fighting these two major forces, the government and traditional banking system, while also, uh, you know, having a completely new paradigm. So I think, um, you know, obviously EVs are, are, that's another thing that's similar with EVs. They, they're like a whole new paradigm. You need new infrastructure for EVs, um, you know, charging for the most part same thing with crypto you need you need to build a completely new infrastructure wallets that are that are user friendly um you know because a lot of wallets are not user friendly just like with electric vehicles a lot of chargers are not user friendly which is why um you know all of a sudden now everybody is adopting tesla's charging network because all of the other charging networks not only is there not enough of them of course but they suck. They're broken all the time. I believe me. I've I've tried to use them a few times, and and a lot of sometimes it doesn't work. Tesla always works, so it takes a while to build good, reliable infrastructure for a new paradigm like electric cars or like crypto. So, um, so really, that's what I think is going on here uh, with DeFi, with crypto in general, um, and obviously we still don't know what the, you know, what will have the greatest product market fit at this point, as I said, I think Bitcoin as digital gold is one of the only true product market fits that we've had in crypto, as well as, um, <clears throat> as well as uh, stable coins, especially for, um, for developing countries, you know, obviously in the US, we already have US dollars. So it's not as big of a deal than it is for other countries for remittances being able to make remittances without having to go through um you know a lot of the bs that you have to go through you know a lot of the time it costs so much money just to spend just to send back like a hundred dollars to your country um so i think i think the general message of this video is to be patient that look at electric vehicles look at a lot of things that have disrupted industries and realize that, um, you know, it takes a while because it is growing very quickly, but it's still a very small amount of market share. So, yeah, that's something I've been reminding myself. And if you want to learn more about um, adoption growth curves, <clears throat> check out Tony Siba. He talks mostly about um, about renewable energy and the uh, he, he talks about cost curves a lot also. Um, I didn't really discuss that in this video, but that's a huge part of adoption as well when something is becoming more and more cost efficient. Um, but check out Tony Siba if you want to learn about um, how how uh, disruptive technologies get adopted. You can learn a lot from him. So that's it. If you liked the video, leave a like, subscribe. See you next video.